Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I want to share with you my German infantry. In the past you've seen my World War II Kriegsmarine and that was my very first episode and later I brought you my World War I German airplanes and that was episode 21 Warbirds. My German infantry covers World War I and World War II. I've included some other items previously seen, specifically artillery and a Britain's Panzer IV tank. If you'd asked me, do I collect German figures, my answer a year ago would have been no. But after I completed the inventory of my collection in early 2022, I was a bit surprised to see I do have a few pieces. So, how did this happen? Because I keep telling you that Canadian figures are what I collect. Well, my only explanation is that I'm probably similar to you. I buy what interests me or what I find unique. And for some of these sets, that is the case. So, sit back, enjoy the video, and if you like it, please hit the like or subscribe buttons or share it with a friend. Thank you very much. I'm going to begin with some of my earlier purchases. I suppose the first piece I bought was this set of German Lancers in steel helmets and gas masks. I saw this at Under Two Flags, that incredible toy soldier store in London. What struck me then and still makes me pause is the uniqueness of this set. It's made by Tommy Atkins, but look at the combination of things happening here. You have the steel helmeted lancers with gas masks and their horses also have gas masks. This is a set I have not seen replicated by any other maker. I think it's also a haunting image of the horror of war. I mean it conveys clearly the message that no one is immune from the ravages of gas warfare, man or beast. I'll follow this one with another Tommy Atkins set that I purchased from Peter Nathan's Elite Military Miniatures in Sydney, Australia. I'll digress here for a moment. I bought this at his former location in a historic commercial building. This year, the store has relocated and Peter has or is retiring, handing over the reins to Sven. And best wishes to all of you. When I saw this set, and we're talking 2003 or 2004, I had already bought the aforementioned Lancers. I think this is what motivated me to follow up with the pack team and riders. Again, this is unique, and I can't recall a similar set made by another maker, certainly not in gloss. Both of these sets are no longer on the Tommy Atkins website, so I don't know if you would have to contact the company directly and request a special order. Britain's did its premier series back in the late 1990s, early 2000s, and this German World War I 7.7 .7 gun appealed to me then. I like the action of the figures, the coloring, and the fact that it came with a limber. It is set number 41024, and it appeared in episode 16, Artillery Part 2, and Britain's premier episode, number 30. So let's move on with the artillery theme and quickly look at the Dinky Toy German 88mm gun number 656. This appeared already in episode 11, Artillery, and while Britain's has recently come out with its own versions of the 88mm, and they are superb, bucket list item for me, this Dinky Toy will have to suffice for now. I have two of these because one is never enough of the Britain's Pack anti-tank gun number 9732. One is still in the its original box so you can see what it would have looked like on a store shelf some 50 years ago. These would have gone with the detailed World War II German infantry that Britain's did back in the early 1970s to what 1990s. Now you can't have German infantry without a panzer tank and this one was produced by Britons in the late 1990s. It is Panzer IV number 17460. I'll admit that other makers have surpassed Britons in the breadth and depth of tanks produced and here I'm thinking specifically of King and Country. But this Panzer IV was made almost 30 years ago 
when your choices were not as numerous or as deep as today. And I would add that for the price of a new K and C all metal Tiger tank just coming onto the market, you could have bought several of these Britons. <laughs> Boy, how times changed. Now, these German infantry figures I purchased from Andy Morant of London uh, at his Portobello market. I keep referencing Andy because if you are looking for single figures to complete a set, or older Britons, or Del Prado, you should be checking out his website or engaging him directly. I initially bought these figures because they are pre-World War II. As James Opie wrote in his great book of Britons, Britons, after a long hiatus, introduced set number 432 to the market in 1930 until, of course, 1941, and it came with eight figures, including the officer. I was lucky that Andy's set came with the box, and note the comment, in field gray uniform. <laughs> this set was reintroduced in 1946 and continued until the early 1960s. These figures here are post-war, and you can see how the coloring has shifted, even on the bases, though the casting is still identical. Perhaps a slight conscious effort to move away from the World War II Wehrmacht and towards the post-war German hair. These darker green figures with blue pants, I don't know if someone repainted them or this was how Britons did them, um, leaning towards a repainting. Anyway, I don't have an answer. So there you are. Seems you never know what you have or why until you do an inventory. Until next time, keep collecting.